This video is the second in a two-part series designed to illustrate the steps in planning and conducting a successful closure of a lagoon or earthen manure storage basin. After watching this video, viewers should understand recommended practices for land applying liquid and sludge to cropland, methods for removing, hauling, and applying sludge to cropland, steps to calibrate a manure spreader, how to decommission conveyance pipes and other components of the system, and recommended land grading and ground cover establishment. The goals during closure of a lagoon or earthen manure storage should be to, one, utilize stored nutrients such that their agronomic value is maximized while ensuring minimal risk to the environment, and two, permanently eliminate the storage structure or convert it to a pond. There are two more common options for sludge and effluent removal from a lagoon. The first option is to dewater the lagoon as much as possible through an irrigation or drag hose system, leaving all of the settled sludge in the bottom of the storage. This option requires access to irrigation or drag hose system and then handling of larger volumes of sludge. The other way is to agitate the storage with the intention of getting as much sludge into suspension as possible. The agitated mixture of effluent and sludge can then be pumped and applied to cropland through a drag hose system or tank style spreader. Inevitably, there will still be sludge in the storage once the mixture has been removed, but the volume will be much less than dewatering and handling the sludge separately. Sludge removal for either option will require an excavator or large loader and a manure spreader that can handle liquid or slurry manure. Side slinger style spreaders are likely to handle manure of this consistency the best. Regardless of the method chosen for land application of manure, make sure to apply it in an agronomic manner. Calibration of any manure spreader, whether an irrigation, drag hose, tanker, or solid spreader is the only way to do this. Knowing your application rate is critical so that over-application of nutrients does not occur. When applying liquid through an irrigation system, the simplest method to verify application rate is to place four to six rain gauges across the field and measure how much effluent is being applied. When using a drag hose system, application rate can be determined using the flow rate, speed of the tractor, and width of the toolbar. If a tank style spreader is used, calculate application rate by taking the volume of manure and dividing it by the application area. When hauling sludge, there are a few ways to calibrate your spreader, but one of the simplest ways is to spread out several 22 square foot plastic sheets across the area you plan to apply using rocks or flags to hold the sheet in place. Spread as usual and collect each sheet individually. Weighing each sheet individually in the bucket, subtract the weight of a bucket containing a clean plastic sheet from the weight of the bucket with a manured sheet. Because the sheet is 22 square feet, the application rate in tons per acre is equal to the weight of manure on the sheet. For all types of manures and spreaders, adjust your application rate based on the manure analysis and the nutrients you want to apply. In order to prevent manure additions to the storage, conveyance pipes or other conduits to the storage must be removed or otherwise prevented from allowing manure to flow to that storage. If complete removal is chosen, trenches where the pipes were should be filled and packed with soil. If pipes are left in place, the inlet pipe can be broken off and all access points permanently plugged. To minimize cost at our lagoon, pipes at Haskell Ag Lab were left in place with the inlet broken off about five feet back from the original berm. Access points in each building were plugged with concrete. To minimize waste, mix cement thick enough that it stays near the access point. Due to the size and slope of some pipes, using wadded paper or some other material to prevent movement of the concrete before curing may be necessary. Once the storage has been emptied, it's a good idea to contact your state regulatory agency to determine if land grading and deconstruction of the berm can progress. Some states may require that the regulatory agency be given an opportunity to inspect the structure once it is emptied. For structures that were built with a compacted clay liner, two options exist for managing the liner material. It can be excavated and tilled in with the surrounding soil or left intact and covered with soil. If left largely intact, holes or trenches should be created through the liner to allow stormwater to drain from the area effectively. A liner left intact below the soil surface may lead to frequent ponding or permanently wet soil at the location. 
The berms of the structure can now be deconstructed and clay liner material within the lower section of the berms may be incorporated into surrounding soil. During the final stages of the land grading process, ensure that the area is mounded slightly to facilitate drainage and accommodate settling of the soil over time. Establishing and maintaining permanent vegetation cover is an important final step in the closure process as the bare soil in the area where the storage structure used to be is subject to erosion until the ground cover is established. A plan for establishing vegetation on site should be developed prior to completing the closure of the structure to minimize the amount of time the disturbed soil is left bare. The NRCS offers a conservation practice standard code 327 describing criteria for establishing conservation cover depending on the intended use of the land area. At a minimum, it is important to select plant species that are best suited to the soil, climate, and site conditions and to adequately prepare the site prior to seeding at a rate that will accomplish the desired cover. Conservation cover vegetation scenarios include introduced grass, native grass, pollinator species, and monarch species mixes. The pollinator and monarch species mix are a combination of native grasses, legumes, and forbs. All mixtures are used to reduce soil erosion, reduce soil quantity degradation, improve water quality, develop wildlife habitat, and improve air quality. Payment rates vary from $79 to $129 per acre for the introduced and native grasses. Pollinator species and monarch species mix are higher payment rates starting at $400 per acre. For current rates, contact your local NRCS office. As we've shown in this two-part video series, the process of planning and conducting a lagoon or earthen manure storage base enclosure requires careful planning and management of the storage contents to ensure economic use of manure nutrients and mitigation of environmental risk during pumping and application activities. Aged lagoons and manure storage structures or any structures that are no longer being operated should be emptied and decommissioned if operators do not intend to continue managing the structure as a manure storage. State regulatory agencies, University Extension, and the NRCS can all provide guidance during the process of planning and conducting a lagoon or manure storage structure closure. Manure storage owners are encouraged to contact their state NRCS office to inquire about cost share opportunities for closure of their manure storage.